In this video, I'm going to talk through cell differentiation and specialised cells. Cell differentiation is when a cell changes to become specialised for a particular job, and it's how we get all the different types of cells of the body, such as sperm cells, nerve cells, muscle cells, white blood cells, red blood cells, xylem and phloem cells in plants, and root hair cells in plants. Differentiation mainly occurs early on during development of a living thing. So for humans, it's as we're developing as an embryo in the mother's womb. Most animal cells lose this ability to differentiate once they become specialised to a certain job. It's different to plant cells because plant cells don't lose this ability to become specialised. However, there are some cells in an adult called stem cells which remain undifferentiated, which means they can change into all the types of cells. And these stem cells are mainly used for um, repair of cells. Most animal cells do lose the ability to differentiate though. The first type of cell I'd like to talk about are sperm cells. These are specialised for reproduction as they contain half the amount of DNA needed to make a living thing. The other half comes from the egg. Sperm cells have a long tail when they're streamlined so that they can reach the egg as quickly as possible. They also have loads of mitochondria within them. That's because mitochondria is where respiration happens so it gives the sperm loads of energy. Sperm cells also have an, uh, enzymes in the tip of the head. The tip of the head is called the aquasome. And these enzymes allow the sperm to break through the jelly coating of the egg. Nerve cells are specialised for rapid signalling. They allow electric signals to go through the cell. Nerve cells are long with lots of branched endings. This gives them bigger surface area so the messages can get through the nerve quickly. They also have um, a layer of fat around the nerve and this stops the electrical messages jumping from one nerve to another. If that happened, then the person could be very shaky or very jerky, so we need that layer of fat around the nerve to stop that from happening. Muscle cells are specialised for contraction. They're very long, so they have space to expand and to contract. They're also packed full of mitochondria. Again, mitochondria is where respiration happens, so it's for lots of energy. If you think about a muscle cell, they're going to need lots and lots of energy to have lots of mitochondria to allow that to happen. White blood cells are specialised to fight microbes such as bacteria and viruses. White blood cells are special. Their cytoplasm can flow, which means that the white blood cell can actually change shape and wrap around a bacteria or virus, and we say engulfs the microbe. Never say that the uh, white blood cell eats the microbe, it's engulfing. White blood cells can also release things called antibodies to fight microbes. Antibodies attach to proteins on the surface of the microbe. It makes them all stick together and clump together. Then another white blood cell can come and engulf lots of those microbes that are all stuck together. Red blood cells are specialised to carry oxygen. They contain a protein called haemoglobin. It's haemoglobin that actually binds to the oxygen. Red blood cells also have no nucleus, so the whole cell can be full of haemoglobin, so it can carry as much oxygen as possible. It also has a very thin membrane, so lots of oxygen can diffuse across very quickly, um, and it's shaped almost like a refresher. There's a little dimple in the red blood cell, again making the surface area larger, allowing lots of oxygen um, to be contained within that red blood cell. Xylem and phloem cells are in plants and they are specialised to transport water and sugars. Xylem transports water and the phloem transports sugar. One way you can remember that is xylem starts with an X and water starts with a W, so close together in the alphabet. And they are long and thin and they basically form tubes much like the blood vessels in our bodies. Root hair cells, again, these are in plants. Uh, lots of my students think that these are in animals because they're called hair cells. These are actually in plants and they're specialised for absorbing water and minerals. So they're just part of the root. They're basically tiny little projections on the surface of the root um, and it increases the surface area so that the root can absorb as much minerals and water as possible. I hope this video has helped you learn what uh, cell differentiation is and about different types of specialised cells and examples of them and why they look like they do.